Hi everyone, a very warm welcome back to Mech Tech. Today we are back on the Eddie Stobart Reliant Miriam, as it says on the bonnet there, and we're going to get the carburetor off, uh, get it all opened up, cleaned out, sorted out hopefully, and get this hopefully running a bit better. That is the hope, fingers crossed. So without further ado, I'm not going to waffle on, let's crack on, get that carburetor off, we'll get it on the bench and see what we're working with. Right, with the carburetor off, I am confused. <laughs> there doesn't appear to be a lot wrong with it, to be honest with you. You can see in there, there's a little bit of sediment at the very bottom, but the fuel is pretty clear. Um, the float is not stuck. You can see that moving up and down there, no problem at all, so that's not the issue. Um, the needle is all clean. A little bit of black on the back of it, but nothing really. I'll give that a little clean while it's out. Um, obviously there's nothing in there really, that's just the top of the dash pot. So I'm a bit of a loss at the moment as to uh, why it's running without a fuel pump attached, but not running with a fuel pump attached. Makes no sense to me at all. So, not really sure at the moment. I'm just going to uh, keep looking and see what I can find. Right, with the carburetor back in, um, and I won't lie, I forgot to put the big spring back in the top of the plunger, so it wasn't running that well to start off. Now I put that back in as well, because I left it on the bench, what a numpty. As you can see, it's now ticking over fine with the fuel pump connected. Now, the reason that I found out that the fuel, uh, we, oh, sorry, the engine would run with the fuel pump disconnected is because someone previously had connected the hose from the pump to the overflow on the carb or the vent on the carb I should say which is why it wouldn't run with obviously fuel pumping into the what effectively is the outlet so I've now swapped the pump over I swapped the pipe over onto the right port and it obviously works absolutely fine now I only copied what was there which is why I didn't realise as soon as I started thinking about it I thought we well, must be around the wrong way as you can see that's ticking over nice revs up Tick over a little bit high. We can adjust that quite easy though. There's a little thumb screw in there. Which, uh, let me see if I can do it while we're on camera. Seems to be running fairly smoothly, dare I say it. Not too bad, it's got a little bit of a tick to it. Might have to do the valve clearances on it, that's nothing major. As you can see, there's a little bit of smoke burning off over there. That is all the oil on the block and the exhaust manifold is burning off. So I might let this run a little bit now and let it get up to temperature and see how we get on once it's warm. I'll come back to you in a bit. Right, I've switched it off for a minute. Um, it was running absolutely fine, but I noticed that when it was on idle, the oil light was coming on on the dash. So obviously I'm, I need to check that. Um, it may be that the pickup is slightly blocked in the sump, in which case we'll have to take the sump off and uh, clean it all out which I was kind of edging towards doing anyway because obviously you don't have much sludge and stuff's in there so yeah pretty pleased with that it's uh seems to be running a lot better now now I've got the uh I don't know who now I've got the pipes running the right way I don't know who did that before but um yeah <laughs> that was a bit of a bit of an error so obviously as I said before I only copied what was there so I put it back on the same one that it came off of when I put the new pipe on but it obviously wasn't the right one so uh yeah, at least we've got that sorted out now and it is actually running, so that's good. So now we can sort of um, start looking at making it run even better, if that makes sense. So we'll do maybe an oil change on it, spark plugs. Um, we'll take that sump off and flush all the, so we'll clean all the sump out to make sure there's no gunk in there and clean all the oil pump out as well. 
because obviously that's uh, quite vital that you want the uh, decent oil pressure getting to the top of the engine otherwise it will knack at the top so yeah pretty pleased with that lovely jubbly right i just thought i'd show you this on camera obviously got this running up to temperature and you can see on there you're all like flashing on and off like crazy as soon as you rev it up that goes away so i have had a little look at the oil it is obviously got oil in it it is a bit over full and it does smell a bit fuely so i'm thinking it might be because the oil is slightly diluted for whatever reason i don't know why so i think the next step is going to be to drain the oil out and i think we'll have the sump off and make sure nothing's clogged under there it also gives us a good opportunity to get all the sludge out of the sump if there's any in there give it a good old clean out reseal it with a new gasket and then hopefully that should sort that issue out and we'll have a little, little look at the oil pump while we're there as well just to make sure that that's all sort of healthy and not bound up or anything like that you know so there you go see it's starting flashing again now so yeah i think that's going to be the next uh, port of call let's carry on right whilst i had the super van running this is the stobart van by the way um i noticed this on the floor so I've got underneath to have a look and we've got a, a slow drip coming out of the overflow pipe from the rag. So I don't know whether it's only very slow. I don't know whether it's overfilled or whether there's a slight blockage in the rag or something like that. I mean you can see the colour of that water is very rusty so I think we may have to drop the rag on this as well and uh, obviously maybe see if we can back flush it with a hose clear a load of gun pad it may be put a bit of uh, rad cleaner in it something like that um, and obviously uh, get that to clear out a bit it's not overheating at all but obviously don't really want it dripping like that as you go up the road unless it is the fact that it's just a bit over full um, only time will tell on that sort of thing but I think it might be worth taking that off just to obviously have a look and see what we've got because we don't want to end up uh, doing all the engine nice and then having a problem with it overheating after you know you can see there's a little tiny bit of steam occasionally just coming out of that overflow. You can see how it's slowly dripping, it's not very much. I reckon the rad's got a slight block in it, so we're going to need to clean that out, I reckon. Another job to add to the list. Right, let's have a look and see what the oil comes out of this like. Now it's nice and warm. Are we going to burn me? <laughs> but we won't worry about that. Better to do it warm because it flows out better and get all as much of the gunk out the sump as we can. I know we're going to probably take the sump off anyway, but oh, it hasn't been undone for a while. Oh, we'll have me ratchet. <laughs> Give it a bit of lubrication. Well, that looks and smells very fuely, so I'm glad we're, we're uh, draining that out because that is definitely a long overdue for a change and has somehow got some fuel in it. Don't know how, but it has. So yeah, that is quite stinks, absolutely stinks of fuel. So obviously that maybe the carb's been leaking past or don't know why it would how it would get the uh, fuel in the oil to be honest with you. I have to look at um all the seals on the fuel side of things just to make sure it's not leaking past anywhere it shouldn't be it obviously has been at some point but either that or it's had some sort of flushing fluid in it which hasn't been drained out which is entirely possible i guess i don't really know because obviously i don't know the, the history of this beforehand but that is definitely <laughs> long overdue for a change so it's a good job we're doing it we do a filter obviously on it as well it should be uh, should keep the engine in good health, and we'll we'll probably um, have a little look at the tappets to make sure that they're all adjusted right. Valve clearance is all adjusted right, so that they're nice and quiet. Because I noticed it was a little bit ticky. Nothing horrendous, but apart for the course on an older engine, I guess there's no no major problems I've found so far. So lovely jubbly, let's carry on. Right, as you can see there, that oil was definitely well overdue for a change. But on the plus side, it's not got any sparkles in it any metal bits in it that is really nice and clean and if there is a little bit of fuel in it which uh, I think there is because it stinks for the small time that I've run the engine it probably would have cleaned 
any gunk out that was in there which kind of may have done it a favour in a way so that is absolutely superb so obviously now we can get the oil filter off um, and get the oil changed and obviously that will hopefully keep this running for a long time to come let's carry on right having uh, thought about this for a minute and then spoke to my old mate Dan he said check the radiator cap because that might be why it's leaking past the into, uh, the overflow pipe onto the floor as you can see in there I actually spoke to the owner Mike as well and he said that the radiator cap looked a bit manky so I've waited for it to, waited for it to cool down and as you can see it's full of gunk on there which may be causing it not to seal now that when you rub this sort of brown gunk in between your fingers it's not oily so I don't think it's oil in the coolant I just think it's manky where it's been sitting for however long because I think it's been sitting for quite a few years this van don't know the exact number um, but let's um, you can probably just about see in there the inside of that rad looks a bit manky as well so I think probably the best thing to do is we'll have that rad off give it a flush through both ways and obviously uh, that should hopefully sort, sort it out with any luck and we'll obviously maybe clean this edge up in here. In fact, it feels all right, to be fair. The edge of that feels absolutely fine. There's no corrosion on it. Um, so I think it may just be build up a gunk in there that's was causing it just to weep out very slightly because there's definitely um, no reason that should be doing that. Like, I can't see anything wrong with it as such, you know. So, um, yeah. So I think we're, we'll do a, a red flush on it just to be on the safe side, keep it all cool, and hopefully that will uh, keep things running nicely. Right, next step on the van is to get the engine cleaned down. Now we've got the oil drained out, we want to get all this block cleaned out. So I've actually got an old wheel cleaner bottle full of petrol and we're going to spray it down with petrol, give it a little brush up and hopefully that will or drain all the oil off the side of the block. I think pretty much all it's coming from that rocker cover. We've got a new rocker gasket to go on there, but I want to clean it all down first. Then I want to take the sump off, we'll clean all the sump out and get that put back on. I've got a new gasket for that as well so that can go back on as a pretty much on and off job once we've uh, obviously cleaned it all out and then we can do the rocker, rocker cover take, take that off and get the tappets done and then put that back on and reseal that so that hopefully that won't leak and then we can put some new oil in no be jabbing let's carry on right there we go as you can see in there now i've given the engine a real nice clean up all the way down from the top downwards it's looking a lot lot better uh, I think majority of that was from the rocker cover gasket, which obviously we're going to be changing. Uh, I've also done the same on the other side, obviously. I've got all that um, oil off the manifold, and I've also now gone underneath, and we can actually see the sump again now as well, which is nice. So there we go. So next step now, I'm going to get the sump off of here. We'll see what uh, mysteries we've got lurking inside. Get it all cleaned out, resealed, and then we should be good to get that back on. As you can see, it's had silicon used on it previously, which isn't really the right thing to use, so that's probably why it was leaking. So yeah, we'll get that off, give it a clean up, and go from there. Right, there we go, with the oil pan off, we can see the bottom of the engine is a little bit sludged up, if I'm honest. So I may try and give that a proper nice clean out before we put the sump back on. Just to aid, obviously, any of that gunk getting in the new oil. It's not going to be ideal otherwise. You can see all the silicon on here. That's uh, not done anything. <laughs> it's like a load of snot, it's gross. Um, inside the sump isn't particularly sludgy. It's not too bad at all, actually. You can see the bottom, there's no, there's a little bit in there, but nothing horrendous. I can't see any metal particles in there, so that's obviously a good thing. Um, I think it's just a little bit sludged up inside, so I'm going to give them bits of clean up. What I said about this oil pickup, I think is going to be true as well, because you can see there's something sort of hanging out the bottom of it here. It looks like a bit of sort of either sludge or RTV or something. So I'm going to probably take this oil pump off, give that a good clean out. Um, and make sure that everything's clear on that because I don't think it was picking up although the oil was thin because of the amount of fuel that was in it 
I don't think that was picking up correctly. So I'm going to take that out and have a look, at, have a little look at that. Give it a proper nice clean up. Make sure that that's working as best it can be. And uh, we'll get that uh, put back on again after, obviously, and uh, go from there, I guess. So I'll come back to you once I've got this oil pu oil pump off. Right, I've given this sump an initial clean with a little bit of petrol. As you can see now, I've drained the petrol out. There is quite a lot of grit and sludge in there. So that is definitely a good thing that we're doing this. Now, it's a similar story with the side walls of the block. So I'm going to have to try and get in there as best I can with a scraper and then get all that out and then obviously clean all that with maybe some petrol or something like that to um, get all the side walls clean so that all this doesn't end up in the oil because I think once it gets a bit of heat in it again it's probably not going to do it any good so definitely the right thing to do as you can see the oil pickup is pretty blocked up which is what I thought initially so I'm very pleased that we're uh, got this out to give it a good clean out and I think I might make up a new gasket for it as well same as I did with my one um, and that should see that all right for a good while to come but obviously it needs a damn good clean up first as you can see it's covered in sludge as well so yeah definitely the right thing to do I think on this one so I'm going to carry on doing a bit more cleaning um, when I do it, get a bit more progress I'll come back to you and show you where we're at righty ho I've got the oil pump apart as you can see here now good news on this, it is actually the earlier one which has got the five blades on the impeller so that is absolutely brilliant. I've given this a clean up and I've given this housing a clean up here so far. I've got to clean this bit up here as well. It was a little bit sludgy inside but nothing horrendous so I'm going to get all this cleaned, put it back together with a new gasket and then I'm going to straighten out all this strainer as best I can so that it's not um, pushed up against that pipe in the middle because that should all be like a nice like, oval sort of roundy shape. Um, we'll sort that out and then that will be good to go back in. I've cleaned up all the sump as well, as you can see there. It is lovely and clean and I had a lot of grit in the bottom of it once I finished cleaning it. So it's very good that we've done that. So yeah, we're progressing well. I'm going to get this oil pump, rest of this oil pump cleaned up, get it all put back together. And then we can move on to sorting out, maybe getting some of that gunk out of the engine block. Come back to you in a sec. Right, there we go. That is the oil pump all back together. I've straightened up this strainer as best I can. It has got a little tiny or bigger hole in it there, which is not a lot I can do about. I've just tried to sort of group it all together over the top of it so that it doesn't let any big particles through. I think it'll be absolutely fine. Um, obviously, it's had a new gasket inside there as well, so that is absolutely good and all good to go. So I'm going to get back under the van now and start having a clear up inside the block. There we go. As you can see there, I've degunked the engine as best as I possibly can. Obviously it is quite tricky whilst it's in the van, um, but as you can see there it is totally clean up both sides. Now obviously there are oil stains, I'm not going to get it absolutely immaculate, but there is no loose sludge or debris that can get in the oil now that I can see anyway. Um, I have rotated the crank round and obviously made sure that there's no loose bits sort of sitting on any ledges or anything like that. So I think that's about as best as I'm going to get that as far as cleanliness is concerned. So now I can get the oil pump back on. Now the gasket for the oil pump is in fine condition. So I'm going to put that back on again. It doesn't look that old to be honest with you. So whether, whether someone's changed it in the past, I don't know. But that can go back on. That'll be absolutely fine. Um, obviously the oil pump has got a new gasket inside it. When I took the old one out, it had completely disintegrated. So that won't help things either. And obviously that has all been cleaned out as you saw. And the mesh is all now clear. So it should get some good oil pressure with any luck rather than it being with a light on like we had before so I'm gonna get the uh, as I say get the oil uh, pump bolted back on then we can get the sump resealed back on we can stick a new oil filter on it I've got a new oil filter for it that one doesn't look too old but I'm obviously gonna change it because we're changing all the oil and everything else and that came from uh, Mike who owns the van he sent me a box of spares the other day so that is super duper it's got a, a new sump gasket in there new oil filter new rocker gasket and all sorts of other bits and bobs I haven't even looked through yet so uh, hopefully if we need any parts we, we'll raid that box first before we go buying new stuff so that's uh, really really good so yeah it is going going well um, I'll come back to you in a bit right I have jumped up top side for a minute. Um, I've put the oil pump back on, but I haven't put the sump back on yet. The reason being, I wanted to get this rocker cover off to see what it was like on the top side to obviously see whether there's anything that was going to obviously fall down into my freshly cleaned sump. <laughs> so 
So I've just uh, got the rocket cover off and as you can see it is a bit gunked up up here as well so I'm thinking what I'm going to do is take that rocker shaft off because that's only four bolts or four nuts I should say that comes off fairly easily without having to adjust, readjust anything um, then I can give that a proper nice clean and also then I can clean up all the gunk that's sitting on top of that head there so that it doesn't end up going back down into the bottom of the sump again that is what I'm thinking um, and then obviously once I put the rocker shaft back on again then I can obviously uh, set or check the tappets to make sure that they are all in spec and obviously anything that's not I will then obviously adjust uh, as needed or whatever you know so um, I, I can't really time lapse inside here because as you can see it's quite a small space and to get me in there and the camera is a little bit tricky so it's only those four bolts on the top of here these ones there's four along there one two three and four one at the back um, I'll get those off get that rocker shaft off give it a good clean up and then uh, we can clean up the rest of the head and sort that out let's carry on there we go that is the rocker shaft all cleaned up and all the underneath the head cleaned up as well that is as sludge free as it can possibly be now um, as far as being in the van as such I can't take, take any more off of it I did take the rocker shaft out and clean that as best I could um, it's a hell of a lot better there's nothing loose on it now which is good so that is absolutely superb so now I can make sure that nothing's drained down to the bottom half of the engine again and if it has I can give it a quick wipe and then we can get the sump on and then I can come back up top side and we'll just check the tappets to make sure they're all in spec and then we can get the record cover on top banana There we go, that is the sump back on. I had a job trying to get some of those bolts in, hence why I stopped the time lapse, because otherwise you'd been watching me struggling for ages. So that is all up there and tight and sealed. So now we can go top side and sort out those, or not sort them out, but check those rocker clearances, the valve clearances, make sure they're all in spec, and then we can seal the new rocker gasket onto the rocker cover and get that put on. And then we can get some more put, well, as you know, we've got to change the oil filter, then we can get some more put back in it. Let's carry on. Right, as you can see, we are in the engine bay now. Now, I have gone through these tappets using the starter to turn over the engine. Um, and most of them were in spec, apart from two. I can't remember which two it was now, but two of them were a bit tight. But to make double sure that I've got them as accurate as they can be, I've now taken all the spark plugs back out, and I've also tightened up the fan belt which is just out of shot down there um, where's it gone down here look. the fan belt down there that was a little bit loose so that may have been why we had the ignition light on um, when it was on tick over as well because it may have been slipping slightly so I'll tighten it up to the maximum it'll go it may need a new belt on there in the near future but at the moment it's okay um, so yeah, now I can actually rotate the engine using the fan because the problem was before is I couldn't see the top of the engine and rotate it at the same time because I can't get anything on the crank pulley at the bottom because it's too close to the rad. So now I can actually rotate the engine by the fan using the fan belt and the fan to rotate it because obviously there's no compression because the spark plugs are out. And we've got number eight right the way back up there in shot all the way down. I'm just checking number one and as you can see 
that is pretty much spot on. So I'm gonna go right through all of these, make sure that they're all correct. And as soon as they've done that, then I wanna do a compression check on the engine to make sure that it is as healthy as we hope it will be, because obviously it is running, so it should be fine, but I just wanna get some figures out of it really, just to see what it's running at. Um, and then we can get this cover back on, get some oil in it, and get it running again, see what it sounds like with some new oil, and a clean filter and clean pickup and everything else. Lovely jubbly, let's carry on. Right, I've wound this engine over by hand. I've gone through the tappets about three times, double checked them, triple checked them, so I think they're all okay. They're all pretty much fine, to be honest. I think I had to adjust another one, maybe, just because it was a tad tight, but I'm talking minuscule amounts. So I've got the rocker cover here, which I've got the nice new cork gasket on, and I've actually run some RTB underneath it, and I've run it a bead of it right around the inside of it. This is all dry now, I did this the other day, um, so that hopefully it will stop the oil bleeding through the cork. I'm now going to put another bead of it obviously on the actual bottom surface itself. I'm going to degrease the top of the head quickly. We'll get this stuck on. Um, then we can change the oil filter and we can get some oil in it. And then we can get it running again, see what it sounds like, and see once it's warm if the oil light stays out and also the charging light stays out. Let's carry on. Right, I've got the uh, old oil filter off. It goes just in here. It's quite tight to the chassis, but you can get in there. Now we're using a Mal OCO, sorry, an OC1051. Now my old mate Dan found out about this. Um, this is a good filter for these because it's got an anti-drain back valve in it. When he found, when um, he put a, a different oil filter on his engine, every time he stopped it, he could hear all the oil draining back into the sump, which is obviously not ideal because then you're having to reprime it effectively every time you start the car again. So this is a good oil filter for these because it's safe. It's, it's got an anti-drain back valve in it. So it's good, uh, thanks, big thanks to Dan there for finding out that information. Right, so that is as simple as that. It just screws on, hand tight, as tight as you can get it. I'll put a little bit of oil around the seal so that it seats nice. Now my hands, I've got a bit of arthritis in them now, but still got that pretty tight. So that should be good. So that's that on. Um, now we can go top side and I just want to do a compression just, test just out of curiosity we'll put some oil in it first so it's not turned over dry um, and then we should be good to start it back up and see how it runs right we've got oil in the engine now and I'm going to do a, a test on this this is number four cylinder I'm just going to turn it over I've not got the HT leads or plugs or anything in so it won't start <laughs> Well, that's pretty healthy. That's about 130 PSI. So that's good. So I'm gonna go through the other three, see what they read, and then go from there. Right, this is number three cylinder. Again, good healthy reading. About 125, 120, that's fine. Right, number two. Once again, between 125 and 130, that one's fine. So we'll come back to your number one and then we should be good, hopefully. Right, this is in the number one now. That one's slightly lower, but it's still well over 100 PSI, probably about 115 PSI. So I reckon that that engine is pretty good and healthy. So I'm gonna get a new set of spark plugs put in this now because obviously I did fire it up on the old ones after I'd decarboned them where they didn't have a gap. But I'm going to put a new set in just so that we've got a brand new set to start with. Get it running again and see what it runs like. May have to do a few little adjustments on the carb um, as we go along. But it seems like it's going to be all systems go. Lovely. Right, we've got fresh oil, fresh plugs, um, fresh everything. <laughs> Let's see how it, if it starts and how it runs. Or not, as the case may be. There you go. Had to get some petrol up, I think.
Come on. Wants to go? Why are we not going? We weren't, <laughs> weren't known until it gets warmed up a little bit. Come on. It's a bit reluctant to run at the moment, I don't know why. It is cold out though, so. Yeah, a bit of warmth into it and I'll come back to you. Right, I've got the old van, super van running again as you can see. Ticking over nicely now. I've had a little fiddle with the uh, settings on the car, but only very slightly. Didn't really want a lot, but it does. It's okay. It's ticking over fine. I'll rev it up for you. Hang on. Has a little bit of a sort of uh, a slight little sort of stutter as you rev it up. But I'm wondering whether that's to do with this pipe on the fuel pump here. It's quite crushed. As you can see that. Put it down on it, you get to see it. It's quite crushed, and I'm wondering whether it's restricting the fuel flow. There's quite a lot of air bubbles in that filter down through there. So I may um, look into that pipe and see whether I can maybe put a piece of um, metal pipe inside it, maybe, or something like that. I can flare the end on it with like a brake pipe type thing. Not sure 100% what's supposed to go in there, to be honest, but. Um, yeah, other than that, it seems to be okay. It looks like we might be leaking a little bit of oil out of that head bolt. Not much I can do about that, I'm afraid. But, um, yeah, it seems okay. It's not overheating. So, just sort of trying to run it up. And also, we've got no oil light anymore on tick over. Now it's warm, which is good. We've got a very, very faint ignition light because it's a dynamo on this. And as soon as I rev it, goes away so I think we're okay on that side of things I think it's purely for the fact that it's a dynamo and it doesn't get a lot of um, charging when it's on tick over so I think we're about there on the engine as far as the tuning side of things apart from looking at that fuel pump which I'm gonna have a little look at in a minute I think we might be uh, moving on to brakes hopefully soon top banana right ignore everything I just said about right about this fuel pump um, it ran out of fuel <laughs> so the gauge is not very accurate because it's still saying it's got fuel in it and it hasn't so that pipe doesn't appear to be affecting anything because I've got fuel in that filter I'm just trying to get the filter so you can see it there's fuel in there now as you can see and it revs up nice and clean now so amazing what it does when you put a little bit more fuel in eh? <laughs> so yeah I think we're definitely onto a winner as far as the tuning side of things now it's just going to be getting on to brakes. Lovely jubbly. Just thought I'd show you how this uh, starts up now it's warm. No throttle, no choke. This is just me turning the key. I'm not even in the van. Look, ready? <laughs> well chuffed with that. That is superb. Top banana. Right then, that is going to be it for this episode on MechTech. We have reached a good stopping point once again. At least now the engine itself is running nicely, ticking over, revving up. 
all that sort of thing. It's absolutely superb. It leaves us now time to concentrate on the cooling system and the brakes. Now the cooling system basically just wants to flush out. The problem with the uh, overflow weeping slightly was sorted by me cleaning up that cap that I showed you earlier in the video. So that is absolutely superb. No more leaks on that. So I just want to flush the rad, flush the head. We've got a new core plug in the head too on the next episode. Um, and then we can see that's that bit done and then we can get the brakes sorted out. And once the brakes are sorted out, in theory, it's drivable again. So that is absolutely superb. Um, I know I used two different colored sealers on the sump uh, gasket resealing that. That drove me nuts. I didn't realize I had two different tubes of sealer. But they were both the same make. But one was gray and one was gold. So it is what it is, unfortunately. I've wiped it all off around with the uh, old panel wipe on the outside so you can't actually see any of the sealer. So it won't drive you nuts. If you look underneath it, you won't see two colored sealers. So that's good. So anyway, I'm waffling. If you do like what you see, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button down there. Really do appreciate that. Well over a thousand subscribers now, so thank you so much everybody for subscribing, supporting the channel, it really does make a difference. Um, I have got Instagram, mech underscore tech, 1985, and I have got Facebook, mech dash tech, for little sneak peeks during the week of what I'm up to. And all these left me to say is thank you very much for watching, and if you want to join me soon for more automotive adventures, I'll see you again next time. Cheers guys.